Ten tries. Ten tries? Yeah. Well, you're on camera, see me. Can't beat it. <laughs> Tom, we need to be the other side of that yellow wire, huh? No? no. Well, which end do you fit around? Okay. There we go. Just like downtown. I don't think the Boy Scouts would approve of my Yeah, nose, no, I think that's all right. We'll, we'll give you a, an up on that one. Okay. at Whiskey 5, Germany, America, Denmark, near New Orleans, Louisiana, looking for a demonstration contact. Anybody around? Hello, CQ20, CQ20, CQ, CQ20, hello, CQ20, CQ20, Whiskey 5, Germany, America, Denmark, Whiskey 5, Germany, America, Denmark, near New Orleans, looking for a demonstration to sell. Anybody around?
somebody's talking, it's a one-way deal. I can't, they can't hear you. If they're talking, you, they can't hear you. But they're talking. Right now, he's talking. Yeah, you yeah, they get the phone right now. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Denmark, Germany, America, Denmark. Seven Google Bravo, Whiskey Five Germany, America, Denmark. Germany, America, Denmark. Whiskey five, Germany, America, Denmark. Germany, America, Denmark, 2 Alpha, Louisiana. Your call again, please. Again?
five golf alpha delta calling CP fielding. CQ, 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 CQ field day. This is Whiskey 5 Golf Alpha Delta calling CQ field day. Alpha Delta calling City Field Day. This is Whiskey Alpha. <laughs> Just start again. CQ, 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 CQ Field Day. This is W5GAD calling CQ Field Day. CQ Field Day, CQ Field Day. This is Whiskey 5, Golf Alpha Delta calling CQ Field Day. CQ, 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 CQ Field Day. This is Whiskey 5, Golf Alpha Delta calling CQ Field Day. CQ, 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 CQ Field Day. This is Whiskey 5, Golf Alpha Delta calling CQ Field Day.
This is what, well, just give me a minute. Just yeah, give me a minute. To <laughs> okay. Think. Well, you got to think of what just comes to mind. Because I'm going to chop it up. We'll chop it up. Oh, I'm just trying to get a starting point. Um, uh, so what exactly is this ARL is, Field Day? So. The ARRL, American Radio Relay League, is the national organization of ham radio operators. Every year, ARRL sponsors what we call field day. Field day is the day where hams take all their equipment and go out in the field and under simulated emergency conditions operate. We try and work as many different hams and in many different places around the country as we can to demonstrate our capabilities of being able to set up and run off of generators, batteries, or whatever emergency conditions using portable antennas and radios as we would operate like that in an emergency after a hurricane when the telephone lines are down and all the cellular phones are jammed ham radio will be able to communicate and get the messages out of the local area national we support local organizations such as red cross and the local emergency services agencies in getting the determination in getting okay you pick it up yeah we support local organizations in determining damage assessment that is taken up to FEMA and that is how the local areas get the national recognition for, for uh, disaster aid and funding flows into the area after a disaster. Well, well, a, lot of, a lot of people real, don't realize that cell phones will go down, phone lines will go down. Right. How do, how do the okay. agencies talk to one another? I mean, in emergency, in emergency situations, and we'll go back to probably the most famous recent one is, is the 9-11 the issue in, in New York City. When the World Trade Center came down, they lost a very large portion of their established communication systems. Cell phones, police fire radios, EMS radios, that all went down. They were, they were forced to use very primitive uh, radio services and that's where the hams stepped in because the hams have the interoperability to be able to communicate from one ham to another and by having a ham assigned with fire department EMS emergency management we were able to allow them to communicate between the different groups get the information and get the information they needed so that services could be provided and and the the uh, Disaster could have been, could be mitigated through communications and getting the right people in the right places. Okay. And for the for the people that don't even know what a ham is, would you like just give me the basic or okay. like do you need a license by the government? Right. Kind of thing. You just can't like a CB. You just can't right. talk on. It. Ham radio operators are licensed by the Federal Communications Commission. There are three different levels of amateur radio licenses. 
one being the technician license, which does not require a code test, but requires a fairly knowledgeable technical uh, opera, uh, require, uh, the technician class license has questions on operating skills, FCC rules and regulations, and on technology, on how the radios work. Then there are other licenses going up in scale that require the knowledge of Morse code and more stringent questions on operating procedures, rules and regulations, different methods of communications and technical expertise, you know, to know what a diode or a capacitor is. Yeah, where there are other radio services such as Citizens Band that do not require this and they are, are, they are limited by the... No, this is drop dead, but anyway. That's okay, you can cut it. Uh, well, just tell me about, it's not just talking radios back okay, and forth. Right. Which, all right, all right. There's okay. different things about ham radios, okay. like interest. Yeah, 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 right, right. Okay. Ham radio. Computers, right. everything out here. Ham radio, uh, as a hobby, covers many faceted things. We uh, start off with Morse code, we have voice. We don't just talk on the radios, we experiment. A lot of the communications technology has come from amateur radio and has grown up with amateur radio and has gone into the into like cell phones and uh, internet, wireless internet hams have been doing wireless data communications for many, many years. And a lot of that technology is picked up and moved into the commercial segment. Hams also take present day state of the art technology and modify it for our use to communicate. Hams are experimenters, we experiment, we have fun. It's a hobby, it's like any other hobby. You have the older technology and you have state of the art. Hams try and push the state of the art in communications technology. You talk about even some, some hams on the space shuttle, the space station. Uh, most of the hams, most of, most of the a shuttle astronauts and the space station astronauts are ham radio operators. They have gotten their license. They do communicate, they do talk. Uh, and there are a number of uh, classroom uh, sessions set up with the shuttle and with the space station to allow the students to talk to the space station. They do that on amateur radio. They don't use the normal shuttle communications. When they had uh, the disaster aboard the uh, Russian space station, they used amateur radio to communicate for many, for many days as part of their housekeeping. They didn't have time on their regular circuits to use for talking to their wives or talking to other people, they used ham radio. Um, so what's the, what's, what, what attracted you to amateur radio? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I like to talk on the radio. My dad got me interested when I was uh, 12 or 13 years old and uh, it's just been part of my life. I grew up around it and I found it's interesting. It has helped me in, in uh, my uh, job skills. I've been in electronics, uh, dealt with electrons all my life, and uh, have enjoyed it. It's been a very good, good skill learning uh, hobby. And so, someone who's maybe interested in ham radio but doesn't know how to get started, they're not technically oriented. Is it how hard is it to get a license? It's pretty easy. There is a, there there are a number of books. Uh, you can do a search on the on the web for on amateur radio and or go to the American Radio Relay League website which is A-R-R-L-A-R-R-L uh, dot org on the, on the web, or you can contact us at the Jefferson Amateur Radio Club, 831-1613. We have meetings uh, every Thursday, uh, sorry. We have our general meetings are the third Thursday of the month at 7.30 here, <laughs> here at the uh, Wally Pontiff Playground, which has uh, just been renamed today for uh, Metairie Playground, and uh, we're in the park. You just come on in, and we'll uh, help you out and get your ham license. Anything else you can think of? Uh, amateur radio. When all else fails, there's always hams. When communications fails, the hams are set up. We, we, the very nature of the hobby, we're portable. We experiment. We know our equipment. We're not just a cell phone company we're not just you know, uh, 
one thing where many, th I don't know, yeah. never mind. But like to talk about this, you don't get paid for this. You can't get paid for it. It's a, it's, it's, it's a hobby. Yeah, Ham Radio is out as a non-commercial entity. We do not take any money. We can't, under FCC rules and regulations, take money for communicating. It's a, it's a free hobby, the free service that we provide. Yeah. You talk about how you meet, uh, another question came along, how you meet people from all different walks of life, technical people, lawyers, doctors, Indian chiefs. You know. um, and for those of us my age, Joe Walsh uh, from the Eagles, a ham radio operator, uh, those a little older than me, Arthur Godfrey, uh, Walter Crankite, uh, they are ham radio operators. You get on the radio, you don't know who you're talking to. You, you basically, it, there are no faces. Now, there is a facet of ham radio that does, uh, we do have amateur TV. We are one of the few, few hobby groups to have our own satellites. Uh, no other hobby group, as far as I know, has satellites up orbiting the Earth. And we've had, uh, I think, about 30-some satellites go up over the past 30 years. I think in the early 70s, late, 70, late 60s, early 70s, we started having uh, satellites go up. Um, but you never know who you're talking to. King Hussein of Jordan, the late King Hussein of Jordan, he was a ham and very active, uh, Barry Goldwater. Um, bon Jovi is a ham. Yeah, I talk about also, because I know the, the councilman that came earlier was amazed that with this setup, you could talk around the world. Amateur radio is based, uh, a lot of it is on radio wave propagations. And sometimes that's how sound, uh, that's how radio waves travel through the atmosphere. Uh, with the antennas that we have here today, we can communicate around the world if the solar conditions are, pro are favorable for us. Uh, and it doesn't take much of a setup to talk a couple, 300 miles, just a, a regular five or six foot whip on a car, tuned to the right frequency at the right radio, and you can talk around the country and outside of the United States from a mobile or from a simple setup in a house. Anything else? Again, being a town applied to what game you use with, uh, there's a lot of donkey dust in the uh, marketing of antennas, okay? <laughs> oh, you need some wire and a... <laughs> okay. Now, Walter, I want you to take this. First of all, you gotta make sure it's not... Hold it like that. You know how to flip the bail? Where's the wire? All right, we're confused right now. I'm not much of a fisherman now. I, I just pointed up. Oh, wait, is that, is that uh, free? Okay, now. Wait. The bail. What do you have to do? All right, what you Flip have to do. Flip this thing forward? Yeah. That's it, right? Right. Get your hand out of the way. Get out of the way. Oh, oh. Just, all right. You ready? All right. Set. Yeah, easy that way? First shot. All right. Now, now what? Don't move, Walter. Now comes the hard part. Huh? No, don't move, Walter. That was the easy part. <laughs> that was the easy part, huh? <laughs> to move, Walter. He's doing a good job of not moving. <laughs> Need another hand. Okay, so tell, tell me what's happening here. All right, what we did was we fired an arrow. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Right you got it? Yeah. We fired an arrow with a, uh, a fishing line on it and went over the tree. And now we're going to pull a, a little bit more substantial piece of string so we can tie an antenna on it. 
on this string, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, gentleman at the other end down there with the fishing pole would be real good. Walter, do you know how to reel? By the way, let, let me come reel it, Walter. Usually we catch uh, speckled trout and redfish this way, but today we're just moving a, a string into a, the top of a tree so we can string up an antenna. And we've got, uh, about, I guess about a half a dozen college degrees working on this. Uns <laughs> Untangling the wire down there is a uh, super materials expert. We got an ophthalmologist and electrical engineer on this end. And we're uh, just stringing this thing up here. I gotta go on, I gotta go on camera. Tension on this thing. What do you work mostly? What do you work mostly? Six meters from the Six? <laughs> Come on, bad times now. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, the last couple of weekends, it was good. All right. We got a bunch of new Caribbean stuff. When they had the VHF contest last right. couple, a couple weeks ago. Uh, I got the stuff to work, HF. Just can't do it. Well, do you see that speckled trout on the end? <laughs> Well, you got to find out whether it's a redfish or a speckled trout. I don't understand this rod. It's something like that. Well, Walter. Nothing is ever what it seems. You're left handed. No, I'm not left handed. You know? What happens is you take leftover things from garage sales. You really got to be careful because this is very, very light line. This is. Did I get the knot through? I think we got a big red fish on here. They thought they thought it was a big speck of trout, but I think it's a red fish. Watch the, the stingerees, that's where the stingerees are. <laughs> Not the first time, it won't be the last. <laughs> you got it. Drop that tip. William, tell each your heart out. <laughs> what do you want to do, pull some more? No, don't pull the other end out. Where's the other end? Okay. Okay. You want to unhook you? Yeah. Now. Okay, Walter. You know what you're doing there? Yeah. Okay, we're doing great. Don't we're turn. Don't great. turn loose. I know that much. Don't turn loose, right?
go up about another three feet. Keep going. Uh, all right, that's good. Right there. That's K9 Delta Oscar Golf. All we gotta do is we gotta undo this knot to get through here. Is this close enough? Yeah. Is this close enough the way you want it to be? Yeah, sure. I have to reach up and uh, how about right here? Yeah. Is that all right? Want a little tighter? Yeah, a little tighter. Uh, what happens here? How about that? That's about right. And this Good is sake. precise engineering. <laughs> as they do, as the kids do, right? <laughs> Got another piece of uh, line for the other end? Oh, yeah. You better than step on your fishing boat. <laughs> I am, too. Can we use some of this? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me what the object all this is. Okay, well, what we did is we stuck, shot an arrow with a fishing line on it up over a tree, and we pulled up the center part of an antenna. There's two wires that go off the center part, and that allows us to talk on certain bands. This in particular antenna is what's referred to as a G5RV. It is the design of a fella from England and uh, it's been used worldwide, this design. And uh, many people use it. It's not the world's fanciest or greatest antenna, but it'll do a lot for a little. It's probably 20, 30 bucks in the whole thing. And on a good day, you can talk all around the United States. And on a super day, you can talk all around the world. But you gotta get it up high. And that's the point of the bow and arrow, is to get it high in a tree. We hung it from the middle. Sometimes you, if you have real high trees, you can, I have pine trees in my home in Folsom, and I've got mine up about 50 feet. And I literally have worked the world on 40 and 80 meters on that antenna. CQ Field Day, CQ Field Day. This is Whiskey 5, Golf Alpha Delta calling CQ Field Day. Whiskey 5, Golf Alpha Delta. This is Whiskey 6, United Whiskey. Field Day is the day where hams take all their equipment and go out in the field and under simulated emergency conditions operate. I guess about a half a dozen college degrees working on this. Hams are experimenters. We experiment. We have fun. It's a hobby. Usually what man can screw up, man can unscrew up. Whiskey 5, Germany, America, Denmark. Shot an arrow with a fishing line on it up over a tree, and we pulled up the center part of an antenna. Say after a hurricane when the telephone lines are down and all the cellular phones are jammed, ham radio will be able to communicate and get the messages out of the local area. 
amateur radio. When all else fails, there's always ham. Whiskey 5, Germany, America, Denmark. Whiskey 5, uh, Germany, America, Denmark. Here, one Echo, is Sugar John, Echo. Uh, four, we QSL, one Echo, Sugar John.